In this video, we discuss why you need to have these five items fully paid for before you retire. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! We spend most of our adult life thinking about what we should do with the funds coming in from either our job or our business. Outside of day-to-day -day expenses, things that you have to have, things that you want to have, there is a group of other, and in that other comes responsibilities savings, paying off debt, and paying for assets that you will take with you into retirement. This video will cover what I consider to be the most common expenses that people need to have paid for before they retire. It's not all inclusive, meaning your list may look different than this list. Still, because of the makeup of the list, undoubtedly you know people that have these five items paid for but there's an even higher possibility that you don't know a single person that has all five of these paid for. Also, there will be other big items that need to be paid for outside of this list. And if you think of any that aren't shown here today, put them in the comment section so that others can have the benefit of your wisdom. I'll remind you again at the end so that you don't need to stop the video to input your information into the comment section. And let me make a final comment about the one item that most people are going to expect to see on this list and that is having your home fully paid for. I will leave this to the end because a lot of people do not in fact have their home paid off by the time they retire. Okay, let's get into it. Point number one is credit cards and high interest debt. Credit cards represent a major leak in your retirement cash flow. This is because of the high interest rate that the card charges relative to your other options. Credit card rates are also linked to the Federal Reserve Board's interest rate activity. When they raise rates, there's a good chance that your credit card rate will go up as well. Recently, the Federal Reserve raised rates by 75 basis points. And most people think that they're going to raise rates again. Also, banks tend to increase the margin, the difference between the base rate and the rate that they charge you based on the perceived risk in the world today. During the pandemic, people generally did not spend very much, but coming out of it, they spent a lot. Why is that? because they were at home for two years and it was time to get out and rejoin the world. How did they pay for these mega vacations? Well, a lot of them had built up cash, of course, but others didn't have the cash built up and instead they put those vacations on their credit cards. Vacations of the past that are no longer being used in the present tend to increase the risk of non-payment by the credit card holder and so the banks raise rates. And of course, the third point is just competition. And for reference, the average rate on a credit card today amongst the credit cards that have balances out there is 17.17%. Five years ago, that was 13.86%. And 10 years ago, it was 13.04%. If you're interested in the source of this information, it comes from the Federal Reserve, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Number two is student loan debt. There's a general rule of thumb when it comes to what's called good debt, debt that you take out to improve the quality of your life that includes your home, your career, or frankly, your life. And that rule of thumb is that when the improvement has finished its useful life, the debt should be fully paid off. There's a general term for this, it's called asset liability matching. And the fact is if you're going into retirement with student loan debt outstanding, you haven't matched your liability to your asset because your asset, your career, is no longer in place. Point number three is your contribution to your child's college education. Let me explain. 54.9% of high school males and 69.4% of high school females go to college. Parents generally take one of three approaches when it comes to their children's education. They're on their own, I'll pay for some of it, or I'll pay for all of it. A recent survey from Sally May, the country's leading provider of student loans, said that 85% of parents contribute in some form or another to their children's education. Of that cost, 45% of a child's education, assuming 100% is the cost of the total education, parents contribute 45% from their savings and 9% from loans on average. The average cost of in-state tuition and fees is $9,300 per year. The average cost of out-of-state tuition and fees is $27,000 per year. Whether it's from your savings or from a loan, if you're covering 54% of those numbers, you don't want to have that liability going into retirement. You want to have that fully paid for. Number four is weddings. According to U.S. News and World Report, the groom's family pays on average 12% of the cost of a wedding. The bride's family pays on average 44% of the cost of the wedding, 
and the couple themselves pays 43% of the cost of a wedding. Like anything, the numbers are not etched in stone. 12% of the time, the couple paid for everything themselves. 9% of the time, they paid for none of it themselves. Still, if you're planning on providing assistance, these are important numbers to know and to save for because there's a good chance that your children will have their weddings after you retire. So having that set aside before you retire becomes very, very important. Number five is your bucket list vacation. What is the first thing many people do when they retire? Go on vacation, of course. Invariably, this vacation was the one that they talked their entire life about but never had the time. Now they do. No work, no schedule, just the vacation of their dreams. But a bucket list vacation is not cheap and it's gotten a lot more expensive because people have been locked up for two years and they're all competing with each other to get to the best resorts all around the world. So if you're planning that big trip, remember point number one, don't go into retirement with credit card debt. The same holds true with your vacation. Don't put your vacation on your credit card, save for it in advance. Now finally, back to paying off your home. This one used to be at the top of everyone's list and for good reason. Paying off your home is of paramount importance if you want to have safety in retirement. And frankly, as you get older, your ability to generate income, even side income, becomes much less. So why would we not put this as number one? Well, according to ARP, 44% of Americans age 60 to 70 have a mortgage. There are a lot of reasons for this, but the biggest one is that today people are a lot different in terms of how they buy their houses and manage their careers compared to about 50 years ago. 50 years ago, you'd buy your house, you would live in that house, you'd pay it out over 30 years and you would be done. Today, people move every five or 10 years. Sometimes they move for their career, sometimes they upgrade their home, but they sell one home and they move into a bigger home and then a bigger home. And then at the end of that time, they sell that biggest home and move back into a smaller home for retirement. And they remortgage along the way to five years further out, 10 years further out, 15 years further out. Still, that's not a good reason to not pay off your mortgage. You can take out a 15 year mortgage instead of a 30 year mortgage. But one of the biggest game changers is that the value of retirement assets have gone down in the last six months. Pretty dramatically, in fact, for many people, 15 to 20%. So if someone's faced with not paying off their home early, a home that has a three or 4% mortgage, maybe even less than 3% in some cases, or selling assets at a depressed price or not contributing to assets at a depressed price, many people would choose to protect their investments, either contributing to them or not selling them to pay down the mortgage early. Your mortgage is a liability, there's no doubt about it but a mortgage with a three, three and a half, four percent interest rate is very attractive compared to the alternatives today. Frankly, if you have a three percent mortgage and you try to remortgage your house now, you'd be at five percent plus in many cases. By the way, and this is really important, this argument does not hold water if you have an ARM. An ARM is simply a mortgage that resets at the end of a predefined period of time. If you had what's called a 10-1 ARM, for example, it would be locked in for 10 years and then reset every year thereafter. If it resets in the future and you had say a 3% ARM today, in the future it's six or 7%, maybe even more, who knows, that liability could be huge. In that case, paying off that mortgage as soon as possible takes center stage because you need to really focus in on getting the mortgage paid off before the reset period because no matter what happens, Either the reset will set at a different rate, probably higher, or if you go out and refinance it at that same period of time, if rates are higher, then you'll be resetting your mortgage at a higher rate then as well. Also, before you make any decisions about what to do with your list of your big five or four or six, whatever the number is, seek out the help of a qualified financial planner. A qualified financial planner will look at your individual circumstances and will help you decide what the most important uses of your funds and your liabilities are. Make sure you check into their credentials and don't take advice from someone you've never met who is referred to you by someone you've never met. You see that happen a lot in the comments section below. The bots get in there and they will talk about how somebody made a lot of money with financial planner X, Y, or Z. And then immediately you'll have four or five people ask for their contact information, and then two or three people come back and say that they also used X, Y, or Z. The fact is that's a bot, it's not real. And if you see that name anywhere in the future, 
avoid that person like the plague because frankly, if they're paying someone to do this on a channel like this, frankly, they're going to be not someone you want to do business with more than likely. As a reminder, if you think that there's something that should be on this list but isn't, put it in the comment section below. And as always, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the next time I post a video, I post about twice a week. Also, check out my last video on why you should not pay off your mortgage early. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.